Yo, welcome back to the last second sports where we giving our take down to the last second. Y'all already know, but hey, I got to touch on it. I got to touch on it. Our Detroit Lions, we got a big time player coming up for a big time contract. I think we should be where y'all know what I'm talking about. It's that guy, TJ Hawkinson, tight end. I think he's had a solid career so far. Do I think he needs that big money career? Has he put up the career where he needs that big money? No, not at all. I don't. I don't believe it. I really don't. I'm gonna tell you why. Now, I think he is a nice little piece addition to the offense, but statistically, he hasn't put up. I want to say top three numbers if we're going off based off contracts. I'm not even gonna touch on the top two tight ends, George Kittle. And Travis Kelsey for his contract, and I believe those are probably the top two tight ends in the NFL also. So I don't think he's deserving of that 15 mil a year contract that he's asking for, he's projected to get. I really don't. Now, there's other tight ends I believe they're still better than TJ Hawkins. I think Mark Andrews is better than TJ Hawkinson. Darren Waller for the Raiders is better than TJ Hawkinson. So I don't think his contract should be bigger than those boys. And right now, Waller hasn't even hit his contract yet. But as far as Mark Andrews, Kittle, and Kelsey, those are going to be in your top four as far as contracts. We know Kittle and Kelsey's making $14, $15 million a year. Mark Andrews is sitting right there at fifteen, um, $14 million a year. Sorry about that. And I don't think he's deserving of that just because he hasn't put up those type of numbers. And I don't even feel like I should I'm, – I'm not even going to throw out the stats because we know statistically he's blown away by those three players right there. Now, TJ Hawkinson is a good football player. Run blocking is so-so. Pass catching, receiving yards after the catch, he's solid. But he also creates a lot of penalties. All us Detroit Lions fans know TJ Hawkinson was good for at least one penalty a game. And if you're supposed to be our all-pro top-tier player – you need to be leading by example and not getting penalties. He missed. He only played in 12 games last season, so he didn't play a full season. His rookie year, he didn't play a full season either. 2020 was the only time he finished a full season. And, now, I mean, obviously, statistically, that was his best year. That year he played 16 games. He had 62 receptions, 723 yards, and six touchdowns. So that's what we got out of TJ Hawkins in a full year. And that was with Matt Stafford. Last year, he played in 12 games. He had 61 receptions, 538 yards, and four touchdowns. Cool year. Cool year. But since he's been in the league, he's only had 160 receptions, a little over 1,600 yards, and 12 touchdowns. And if we're going to be real, and this is what's kind of screwing us, is that Dallas Garter, uh, Garter getting a uh, contract because he's now getting a 14.2 mil a year annually. Not a lot guaranteed. I think he only has like $15 million guaranteed, which they can kind of get out of that if they want to, but that hurt us Lions fans because if Dallas is getting that type of money, he doesn't have a biggest name as TJ Hawkinson, but if you look at the numbers, Dallas actually outperformed them. Receptions, they're sitting at 160. I'm going off the past three years since TJ Hawkinson came in. They both had 160 receptions. Goddard's got him on yards with almost 2,000 yards, and they're tied for touchdowns. Now, D Dallas Garter, Garter, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing the name right, but just bear with me. He's actually had 20 less targets than TJ Hawkinson, too. So by him getting paid, that kind of put us in a bad spot. I just don't really feel like we should pay a tight end no $14 million a year type of contract, especially with the receiving core we're building right now. We got Jamison Williams about to come in. I think he's going to perform at a high level. We've already uh, seen Amara St. Brown's performing at a high level. DJ Chark's proven that he can play in this league. And then we still got Quintez, Cephas, Khalif Raymond. We got a couple nice undrafted uh, free agent receivers that I think that can help us also. So we're building us up. I feel like a top 10 receiving core. I don't think we need to go pay some tight end $15 million a year. I think we should get a tight end that's going to get us right around anywhere from 10 million a year or get a rookie tight end, which we did draft one. Let's see if he can flourish. But bringing back TJ Hawkinson on that type of money, I don't think it makes sense when we still have other pieces we need to build along the defense, I would rather honestly get a top tier pass rusher, a top tier cornerback for $15 million a year, as opposed to tight end where I already feel like our offense is going to be explosive. We got the O line. We got a running back, got a stable of running backs 
and we have a good receiving core. So I don't see the benefit of paying that type of money. I know we drafted him and he's, he's a great culture fit, things like that. But just that type of money doesn't make sense. Now, we, we really need to hurry up and do it, either figure out the contract or just, you know, let the man walk in free agents. Because if Mike Jacecki gets paid before TJ Hawkinson, that's really going to hurt us also. Because statistically, Jacecki has outperformed TJ Hawkinson since the past three year span. T, uh, Mike Jacecki has had 177 receptions, 2,053 yards, and 13 touchdowns. So, right there, he has put up better numbers than TJ Hawkinson. And he's up for a contract right now. I know he's on that franchise tag, but we either going to need to pull the trigger before he gets paid, or we're definitely going to end up having to give TJ Hawkinson 15 mil a year. I'm not saying Hawkinson's a bad player. I do like TJ Hawkinson. I just don't think he's worth that type of money. The George Kittle, the Travis Kelsey, even the Mark Andrews type of money. And then David and Joku getting his money. He's right around 13 mil a year, things like that. It's really hurting us by sitting back and not getting the contract done. Because if we could have fired off and got him anywhere from 10 to 12, that's cool. But I still personally don't believe he impacts the game enough to be paying a tight end that type of money. So hopefully we can hurry up and get this done or pull off some type of trade. I hope we pull off a trade. And I know y'all going to think I'm crazy, but I – I would honestly move TJ Hawkinson for a second round pick right now. I, I 100% will move him for a second round pick. See if we can get a tight end coming out next year in the second or third and just build off that because I feel like the receiving core is enough right now for our passing attack. It's not like Jared Goss about to be out here throwing the ball 40, 50 times anyways. So I don't think we need to pay another pass catcher. He would be the most expensive pass catcher we have in the building. I don't think it's worth it. Not at all. That's your boy Rag giving his take on that TJ Hawkinson ordeal. Either we need to move him, try to lock him in around the 10 mil, 10 to 12 mil. Do not pay him as a top tight end because he's not worth it. And that's what I got to say. Y'all be easy. Thanks for tapping in. Leave your comments below. Click that like and subscribe. And I'm out. Be easy, y'all.